Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna be going over how I use the coding language Python to determine the most efficient clock times for kelp farms like this. Before we can even attempt to simulate something in Python, we first need to understand in a general sense how the game updates, because that's gonna be crucial for how we actually loop our code. So Minecraft runs on game ticks. It's going to be the game's internal clock and every game tick, the game will update. So let's say in this really simple example here, these blue sections are one second. We've got five seconds shown here. In each section, you can see that it's made up of 20 blocks and each block here is going to represent a game tick. So in Minecraft, there are 20 game ticks per second or 20 updates per second. Now, a crucial feature of Minecraft's game ticks are the random ticks. So in each game tick, there are three random ticks. So basically, every game tick, the game will update. It'll also generate three random ticks. And once that's all done, the game will move on to the next update, which will generate three more additional random ticks, and then I'll continue on. Now that we've got a decent understanding of how the game updates, we need just a little bit more info. In front of me, I've got a 16 by 16 perimeter, and this is defining one chunk. Now, a chunk in Minecraft, you might be familiar with this, is just a 16 by 16 area that goes from the very bottom of the world all the way to the very top. And for example, it's used in slime chunks where it will define where slime in the world can be generated. And this is just a way that Minecraft can subdivide the world without having to generate the entire world and really slow down your computer. For the random ticks we talked about, we need to further divide this chunk into subchunks. So here we've got a subchunk shown, and all it is is just breaking up this main chunk into 16 block tall volumes. So every subchunk is going to be 16 by 16 by 16, which is 4096 square blocks in volume. And for every update we've got, the game will go into each subchunk and then generate those random ticks. So for every game tick, there is a three out of 4,096 chance that a block gets a random tick. And here I show that three different blocks have received one random tick, but it's actually possible for the same block to receive all three random ticks. And so we need to consider that possibility as well. If you're on Java, you can press F3 and G. This can actually show you all of the chunk borders. This square here is gonna be a chunk, and it's all the yellow walls that you see goes all the way up. And then the blue lines show the subdivisions for the subchunks. All right, now that we've got a general understanding of how the game updates and how random ticks are generated, we need to look at the mechanisms behind kelp so we can actually code it. There are really five key features we need to consider the first being the layout of kelp. Now this might seem really simple, but it's still something we need to consider. Now kelp can be grown on any block whatsoever, as long as it is under vertical flowing water or in a water source block. And as you can see here, kelp can be packed as densely as you want it to be. The second mechanism is that when you plant kelp, it doesn't actually start at age zero like most farms it chooses a random number between 0 and 24 as its starting age. The next mechanism is that kelp needs a random tick to grow, but it's not a guarantee that if our kelp block gets a random tick that it does grow, it's only a 14% chance. Next is that when kelp does actually grow, it can only grow to a max age of 25. And so like we had said, if this generates to be a random number of 24, then the kelp can only grow to be two blocks tall. That's why pretty much every farm harvests at the second level, because if we harvested one layer above and this could only grow to be two blocks tall, we would never harvest this. It'd be a waste and inefficient. In this example here, we have a kelp that starts at age zero and grows to age 25, which is 26 blocks max. And if you're on Java, you can press F3. And on the right there, you'll see the age of 25. And that's why all these kelp farms are so tall just to maximize the growing potential of the kelp. The last mechanism is that once we do harvest our kelp, this kelp block down here doesn't retain its same age. 
it'll actually regenerate a number between zero and 24. So now that we've got a short list of features to consider when coding, let's go ahead and check out some actual farms. While the subjects of this video are clock-based farms, I do want to just briefly mention observer-based farms because they are really the second most popular design. This first one here is going to be the classic observer-based one where you've got an observer row and a piston row. And if any observer activates, the entire row activates. And so it's a really good way to make sure we catch those ones that don't grow to full height. For kelp, this is actually a really decent design. And some might say that, oh, doesn't breaking up the observer groups increase efficiency? Because this actually is true for sugar cane, but breaking up actually doesn't help. Here's a more extreme example of that, where we've got each piston being individually controlled. And for sugar cane, this is actually a higher efficiency farm than this one, but because kelp has that issue of potentially maxing out at this height, if this unit maxes out at age 25 here, it'll never reach this observer and it'll never get harvested. And your farm is basically only a three unit farm now. And so kelp, this kind of idea doesn't work. Instead, what you would have to do is have your observer and your piston both on this second level, and that would actually become a perfectly efficient kelp farm. I have already done that for sugarcane, and I'll link that video if you want to check that out. And you could apply that same concept to kelp. But let's get back to clock-based farms. So the first one we're going to look at is going to be the kind of beginner or intro clock farm that you might see typically. And all it is is just a simple line of pistons or kelp growing, and then enough room for the kelp to grow to its max potential. This one I've got controlled by a, an etho hopper clock and it's about to go off. And once it does, it'll power a little block there. The pistons will trigger and then all the kelp will float to the top. Now, because kelp is so simple to harvest and it's so area efficient, block-based farms are really the best kelp farms available. They're gonna get you a lot of drops for minimal effort. Now, if you're gonna want more drops than this, you might think of just expanding it by repeating this kind of slab, but this is gonna be wildly inefficient just in terms of building it because you're using a lot of blocks and the area that you're actually covering with kelp is pretty low. So instead, you're gonna to wanna to build a farm like this where you've got kelp planted to maximize the area and then a flying machine to harvest. The flying machine is then just controlled by some kind of clock. Here's just another basic etho hopper clock. And if we activate this, if we pretend the clock goes, it'll send a pulse here allowing the flying machine to start going. This has so many advantages over the red farm. One, you're only using two pistons in the flying machine. And so you're saving so many resources on that. And number two, you're just using way less resources just to build your kind of containers versus just one large vessel. So here I've got the code pulled up and on the right side of the screen, I'm actually gonna put a flowchart right now. And this is gonna be really the high level, simple building blocks of this code that we're gonna follow to simulate this kelp farm. Now, I'm not gonna walk you through every line of the code. And if you've never coded before or aren't familiar with Python, don't worry at all. You're gonna do really high level overviews and not gonna to go too deep into it. So it should be pretty easy to follow. Additionally, I'm gonna throw up the list of key features for kelp that we discussed earlier in the video. And we'll kind of see where we check those off in the code. So to start, we're just gonna walk through this flowchart, and the first step is to plant kelp. I'm actually gonna scroll quite a ways down just because a lot of this code is actually a lot of variable setup. So it took us about 100 lines, but here we are. Now all we're doing is just a couple loops to quote unquote plant the kelp. It's really just filling in some data values in some of our arrays so we can have them stored for later. Now I'm gonna keep scrolling and we'll hit the start timer step. And that is really entering this while loop. This is really the heart of the code here. All we're gonna be doing is going from our game tick starting at zero all the way until the end of our test period. And I'm actually doing a test period of 1000 hours. So that's 72 million game ticks. We're gonna go from zero to 72 million in this loop until our test is over. The next is to generate our random ticks. And this is this little section of code here. Really simple, it'll generate random ticks, three per game tick then it'll update blocks accordingly, just like we had discussed Minecraft doing. The last main step is to then harvest the kelp. And we're gonna harvest it based on another little clock here. And this is the harvest intervals. And so what I'm doing here is I'm actually testing about 
90 different harvest intervals. So from one minute all the way to 90 minutes. So that way we're gonna get a lot of data and we actually see a really, really smooth curve that'll help us formulate a nice equation. We can calculate pretty accurately what you know efficiencies and harvest quantities will be based on your inputs for any farm size. That's pretty much all the code on a really high level. And this brings us pretty much to the end of the code. All this is doing just collecting the data at the end, and it's less than 200 lines. So saying I simulated kelp farms in Python might actually sound a little more complicated than what it really is. It was a little tricky to code it, but I'm not a programmer by any means. It's just kind of a hobby. And so it wasn't too bad. Now going down to the list of key features for kelp so we can see where we've implemented those. Really the first one kind of overlaps with that planting kelp, how we lay out the blocks. And we can change that based on certain kinds of farms. The next is how do we actually generate a random age? Again, that's actually really simple. It's just a really small function for it. And we're using some random number generator between zero and 24. Number three, to get a 14% chance generator, we just do kind of a similar thing between one and 100 this time. And if it's less than or equal to 14, meaning 14 out of 100 chance, then that's a 14% chance. The fourth feature we kind of cover in this next larger function, which is really the main function. And all it does is we kind of just check if our kelp block gets a random tick. Is it at its max age? And if it's not, meaning we can grow more, then it'll grow. But if it is at its max age, it'll just skip this step and won't grow. Last, we'll go ahead and scroll back down to the harvest section all the way at the end. And in this harvest code here, at the very end, we have it so that once it's done harvesting, it uses our random number generator again, that function that I just showed up top, and resets the age for whatever block is at the bottom. So there we have it. That's pretty much all the code that went into this. Now I'm gonna show you some graphs so we can see the results of our simulations. All right, so I'll do a quick recap for those who might have just skipped to this part. The purpose of this video was to use Python to simulate a clock-based kelp farm in Minecraft to determine the best timings and configurations for these farms. Now to do so, we had to first understand kind of how the game works, how it updates, how kelp grows, and then we just had to code it. And here I simulated a thousand hours with block harvest times ranging from 30 seconds all the way to an hour and a half and every minute in between. And so we've got a lot of data. Now let's look at it and try to get some answers. So this first graph I've got pulled up is the efficiency. I'm calculating efficiency because that's gonna be a really kind of objective standard measure for how quote unquote good the farm is. So the more efficient, the more stuff you're getting out of that farm or the same farm. Now, there are gonna be some downsides with running higher efficiency farms, and this is kind of where these results become subjective. And so what's really good for one player might not actually be good for another. And the easiest example of this is, here we can see we have a farm that's nearly 100% efficiency, and it's down at 30 seconds for harvest times. But in reality, and for very large farms, there's no way a flying machine could traverse the entire plane in 30 seconds. And let's say we just increased a little bit, maybe it takes five minutes to go across your entire farm. You'll still get a really good efficiency, close to 99%, but having a flying machine run every five minutes is gonna induce so much lag. And to show the kind of tolls that lag could take on your farms, here's the graph showing how many harvest cycles occurred in that thousand hours. Our most efficient farm here is twice as laggy as the second most efficient farm. And they're both like 99.9. .9. So hey, if you're not worried at all about lag and are here just to get the most efficient farm, you want that thing harvesting pretty much instantly. As low as you can get that time, the more efficient your farm's gonna be. But for people who are playing on a crappy laptop like me, I really don't want that farm going that much. Because of that, I'm not just gonna put the graph up here in the video. Instead, we're gonna look at the results and formulate equations based on the data and using those general equations, you'll be able to calculate the efficiency and the total kelp you'll be able to harvest for any size farm with any harvest cycle times and for any length of time you're actually gonna run your farm. So how do we do that? Well, we have to find these things called lines of best fit. And that basically gives us an equation that matches this curve here. To start, we can just do a linear line, like a straight line, and that'll give us this kind of estimate. And so now I have a formula for this red line here, but you can see it doesn't really follow the line that well. So maybe we can do better. To do better on these lines of best fits, you just increase the degree. And so this red line right now is a form of y equals ax plus b. So let's go to a second degree. And this is gonna be a kind of quadratic equation. So this could look like y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And we can simply just keep increasing these degrees until we get a line that looks really good. 
So here we have a third degree, but it's not quite there. And here we have a fourth degree. And for the most part, this one actually fits the curve really, really well. I'm actually gonna pull our equation from this line. But if you wanna see, we have a fifth degree and a sixth degree. This degree six polynomial actually fits the line really well, but because it adds an X to the sixth and an X to the fifth element, I'm not gonna use this to get our formula, just to try to add some simplicity to this. Okay, now that we've got a line of best fit, what do we do from here? Luckily, Python has some built-in libraries and functions that can give us this line. And so we can just pull those coefficients. And I'll show those up on the screen right now. So this is the equation that gets you the efficiency for any farm where X is your input, and that's gonna be the harvest cycle times. For example, let's see what the efficiency is for a clock-based farm with a 60 minute harvest interval. All we gotta do is plug in 60 to this equation and doing the math, we get 49.62 and then a bunch of other numbers. So it's about 50% efficient. And if we look at the data, we can actually go to the 60 minute dot and right there, it's actually 49.799. And so yes, we do see that the equation is a really, really good approximation. And like I said, the best timing really kind of depends on the player and what their wants are and what kind of their computers can handle. And if we think about this curve kind of logically, we would really expect instant harvesting to be the best. And as you increase harvest times, our curve just decreases in efficiency. And this makes sense intuitively. But I find this result actually really interesting for one reason and one reason only. I've already coded a bunch of sugarcane farms in Python, and the results look a lot different than this. I'm going to make a video about sugarcane in the future, so stick around to see that if you want to hear those results, because they might actually surprise you. Now you might be saying to yourself, I don't really care about the efficiency of the farm. I just want a lot of kelp. And to that, I'll point us to our next set of graphs. What I've graphed here is the number of kelp harvested per hour per kelp planted. And we're gonna do the same thing we did with the efficiency. We're gonna fit this curve with a line of best fit so we can get an equation from it. And then we can estimate how much kelp you'll get for any size farm using any clock harvest interval or whatever amount of time you wanna run the farm. And if that's a little bit confusing, let's say I built a flying machine kelp farm and it's three chunks long. That's gonna be 16 by 16 times three, which is 768 kelp planted. And because you don't care too much about efficiency and maybe your computer is just a little bit slower. So let's do an hour harvest time. So every 60 minutes, our flying machine will go. And in this example, we're gonna AFK overnight. We'll say it runs for about eight hours. So let's do what we did before. We'll find a line of best fit like this. And again, this one's actually a fourth degree polynomial. So not too complicated, but still gets a really nice fit. And here's the equation for that line. Now, because the graph shown is actually condensed for one hour and one plant, we need to just add those variables to this equation so you can calculate for any amount of hours and any size farm. So we just plug our numbers in and calculate and we get roughly 22,292. So there we have it. Two equations that pretty accurately estimate the efficiency and the potential kelp you'll be able to get for any sized clock-based kelp farm you've got. So feel free to use these equations to determine the best kelp farm for you, or maybe see how good your current kelp farm is. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from this video or at least found it interesting. If you did, leaving a like would be greatly appreciated. But that's all I've got for you guys. Have a good one.